Κύριε Πρόεδρε, ακούστηκαν... President, many interesting issues were uh, mentioned, many interesting uh, opinions. I will manage to answer to everything that was said, obviously, but I'll try my best to answer to as many as I can. Let me first answer to my friend, Mr. Kefalogiannis. I know him from the, de from the difference of opinion we had in the Greek Parliament. He asked me about the presence of the European Parliament in a few days of the Prime Minister of our neighboring country, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. I hope that everything goes, if everything goes to plan, in a few months this country will change its name and constitution and its new name will be Northern Macedonia. All those years, all those previous years, Mr. Kefalogiannis, whenever the predecessor of Mr. Zaev, Mr. Grevsky, came to the European institutions. How did he call himself? And how did the others call him? Your colleagues, the overwhelming majority of your colleagues, how did they call him? And the uh, overwhelming majority of your colleagues in the uh, European People Party, did they call him somebody uh, from Skopje? This is the European Parliament, and we cannot act like we acted uh, in the Greek Parliament, ha considering this issue in a taboo and burying our head in the sand. And uh, you all know very well that we acted with our head in the sand while the reality was different. 140 countries all over the world, 140, and among them the, the biggest, the USA, China, Russia, have recognized our neighboring country with its constitutional name, the name it has, it has had for 25 years. And its constitutional name is just Macedonia. And Mr. Gruevsky and all the leaders of this country, all those years, called themselves Macedonians and their country Macedonia. But nobody seems, seems to have been irritated by that. And you don't complain, despite the fact that Mr. Zaev and uh, his, uh, the citizens of this country came to Greece, to Greece. And it's nice that they came and uh, went on holidays on our coast because this helped our economy. They entered Greece with a passport which said Republic of Macedonia. If we change the situation, they will come as citizens of Northern Macedonia. There will be this addition. Now, furthermore, I don't know if it is significant, but for many years, Mr. Zaev's predecessor, Mr. Gruevsky, who belongs to the nationalist right, the extreme right political family, had filled uh, its country and the squares of the country with statues of Alexander the Great in every country, in every uh, city, in every square, and with many other symbols of the ancient Greek Macedonia, which is a clear part of our history and tradition. But in future, nobody will have the right to do this in our neighboring country, and not even the present prime minister of this neighboring country or any future prime ministers will have the right to uh, say that uh, Alexander the Great and ancient Greek history is part of their heritage. Isn't that significant for you? What's even probably even more important, more important than anything else, is the fact that every prime minister of this country in the future will confirm that their country is a Slav country and their language a Slav language. This uh, did not happen until now, Mr. Kefalogiannis. And so let me address this plea to you, but because I don't wa want to have uh, just uh, an internal Greek debate, let me also make a, uh, make a plea to all MEPs to understand the following. 
Mrs. Aif and myself are both accused in our respective countries of being uh, traitors. Mr. Mitsotakis in Greece and Mr. Mitkovsky in the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. So politicians who belong to the political family of the European People Party, People's Party accuse us with exactly the same arguments, with exactly the same arguments, arguments that just adapt from one country to the other, that we are traitors, and that this, this agreement is harmful. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen here, members of the European Parliament, don't you think that since both conservative leaders accuse us that we are both traitors and that this agreement is a betrayal, it probably means that both Mr. Zaev and me have done something good for our country. We open a road for the future, for peace, for a perspective of cooperation and a peaceful, a peaceful future, a historic future for our people. And I'm very proud that we have managed that. A member. Na vaprosa na naša ta ungarska. Ke bevios me a formido jo gonos. I agree that uh, what you've said that Mr. Orban will be here, but I agree that I have to speak about him. Let me uh, speak about the substance of this issue. You cannot judge politicians and policies through labels. You have to see and to uh, criticize their opinions and the values they represent. Some people in Europe can, without risking anything, and on the basis of the uh, of the uh, credits that they receive, of the money that they receive, they can say whatever they want. And some people can implement policies because their countries do not have a coast. And some can refer to values uh, whenever it suits them. You said that we brought a refugee wave to our country. I think it is the wars that brought this wave to our country. And I'd like to ask you, do you really believe that any country, even a small country, a landlocked country, can survive on its own without help, without the solidarity and cooperation of other countries? Do some of you believe that cooperation should be uh, according to our whim, whenever it suits us. And whenever an issue does not directly uh, concern you, then you don't need solidarity, you don't need to express solidarity. There can be no future for Europe like that. Somebody talked about the uh, traitorous future for Europe. The logic that we can all do it by ourselves, that uh, Greece should be first, Italy should be first, France should be first, this logic will lead to the uh, dismantling of Europe. This is what I try to say in my speech. I heard my friend from Potami, the river, Miltiades Kirkos, say that he's confused. Yes, Miltiades, yes, but the reality is confusing. And in this confusing reality, we all have to try and make out what is the biggest threat. The differences that I might have with several colleagues, even with uh, colleagues from uh, the left-wing parties, or from the socialist parties, or from the uh, ecologic parties, the green parties, or from the liberal parties. We have differences, but you must understand that now, like in the uh, 1930s, it is the egg of the serpent that is being hatched. And the way to face it was the broader alliance of forces despite their differences. So, to conclude, this uh, discussion on the uh, migration issue, I'm happy 
with what we've managed on the Greek mainland. But the situation on the islands is very tough. And it doesn't, it doesn't uh, mean credit for anybody. But we have to support an agreement which is much better than the alternative of a non-agreement. That is why Greece needs support and we need cooperation and synergies. Because let us remember, refugees and migrants are not just numbers and statistics. We must look behind the numbers at the faces and the names of these people. They may not be European names. They may, may, they may not be well known to us, but they are people. They have beliefs, they have values, and they want to lead a better life. Let me say now a few words. After I've heard the uh, press spokesperson of the New Democracy Party, the Greek New Democracy Party, Ms. Piraki. I'm very happy because I believe in dialogue and confrontation. This is the very fiber of democracy. Ms. Piraki. Let me say, you spoke about the demonstrations of uh, three to four thousand of extreme elements in Thessaloniki two days ago. In February, there were uh, far bigger demonstrations. And as you realize, I would be the last one who would doubt uh, the right of any citizen to demonstrate in a free polity. But, Ms. Biraki, for many years, you were a well-known journalist in a TV channel. And almost every evening, whenever there were massive demonstrations and a lot of repression, for five years in your channel, as you yourself have admitted, you hid reality. That is the way you act as a journalist. And you are not particularly sensitive to uh, the real participation in demonstrations, nor did you talk about the repression and violence against these demonstrations. Today you've become very sensitive. I'm happy that you've become so much more sensitive. But let me assure all MEPs that uh, sensitivity should not be selective. There is no repression and no violence. In the three years we've been in government, the uh, fundamental and social rights of our citizens have been upgraded through to a number of new laws. Sorry. I don't want to upset your other colleague and my compatriot, Mr. Kirchhoff. Because you've asked very specific questions, Mr. Kirchhoff. I think you all know that since uh, exiting the adjustment programs, Greece is a normal uh, Eurozone country, like any other country. With its specificity, of course, that countries that have be been through programs have uh, uh, an, enforce, an increased surveillance like any other country of the Eurozone, Greece will have to meet the objectives that we have set together, the fiscal objective of 3.5% of uh, primary surplus until 2022, but the government of the day will choose the means and policies to uh, achieve these aims and targets, like in any other Eurozone country and any countries that have exited programs. So the policies and means, on the basis of uh, forecasts and statistics, will be discussed whenever we submit, every year in October, our budget to the Commission for the 2019 budget. And we will take in common the correct decisions in order to foster growth for our economy, 
And growth means no more austerity, no more cuts and uh, fostering consumption, to the extent, obviously, that uh, this will be compatible with achieving our financial, our fiscal targets. Finally, the future of Europe. I was asked, what is our vision for more democracy in the Eurozone and for the further path of the uh, EU? We believe in the need of a deepening, of a political deepening. And we believe that the European Parliament should acquire more competencies. I was among those who tried and achieved that the question for the, uh, sorry, the discussion for the fiscal consolidation programs for Greece should not be held behind closed doors, that the European Parliament should contribute to this discussion. I don't know if we managed it completely, but we did our best in this direction. I also believe that in uh, the crucial near future, there should be an increase in the EU budget. For more convergence among the Eurozone countries and, obviously, we will need more transparency and more accountability. Yes, I support an uh, EU finance minister and I believe there should be also an EU labour minister and social cohesion. I'm not for one-sided uh, fiscal fetishism. We uh, will achieve our fiscal targets together with social protection for our citizens. I'm not in favour of a two-speed Europe. I'm in favour of a well-functioning Europe of more cooperation as foreseen by the existing European treaties. Because it is through such policies we will manage a democratic, social and ecologic Europe. So, I thank you all warmly for your interest, for your questions and for the confrontations we had. And let me assure you that despite our significant differences, despite tensions, we have managed to take a, ste a step forward. We've managed to avoid the spiraling, to come out of the spiraling crisis. Let us uh, arrive at lessons about why we had to face this crisis. Let us uh, not repeat these mistakes to avoid the difficulties we faced in the uh, uh, in the recent past. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. That concludes the debate. This, the sitting stands adjourned until we meet the President of the Lebanese Republic at 12 noon.